Hello, right, a little add-on video I'm going to do on estrogen. I've done one before and it was a topic of conversation in the Q&A on Friday night, which was live on live Facebook at 5 o'clock. However, we didn't really get into it that much because uh, there wasn't that many estrogen-related questions, so I thought, you know, it'd be ideal. I just did a little video about it. Now, there's four actual types of estrogen. There's E1, E2, E3, and E4. E4 isn't really a concern to us, that's estriol, and that's only appears in pregnancy. E1 is estron, E2 is estriol, which is the one we're all familiar with, the one that we tend to manage, and then you've got estriol, which is E3. Now, there is a massive trend for a lot of users to keep estrogen as low as possible. Obviously, estrogen can cause gyno, it can cause water retention, and estrogen hormonal imbalance can actually cause acne as well. And it increases the deposit, uh, deposit and storage of fat, particularly around the, the, the waist and the hip regions, what would be termed as female pattern fat deposits. But did you know it increases a increases something known as G6PD, that's glucose 6-phosphate dehydrogenase. Why is that important? Well, G6PD has a direct effect on the pentose phosphate pathway. So what's that? Well, that is the synthesization of nucleic acids and lipids for cellular repair. So let's put this down in basic terms. Estrogen makes you grow. It speeds up your recovery and your cellular repair. If your estrogen is low, you will not grow, or you will not grow as much. So, if you think they're just banging a load of testing, keep your estrogen super low, you're going to get massive, ain't going to happen. You need estrogen to grow, which is why all these boys that like their train and like their letro and are taking 2, 3G a week do not have the physiques to reflect it. They are lean, yes, but they are big. They're not big, they'll tell you because they don't want to be big. If they didn't want to be big, they wouldn't be taking 3G a gear. They're not big because they over shut down their estrogen. It also has other factors. It supports IGF and GH production. Uh, some of you may be aware of, of Novadex reducing IGF-1. It does that because of its blockage of the certain estrogen receptors. So that's why it affects IGF-1, because estrogen supports IGF-1 manufacture. Estrogen also increases ARs, androgen receptors, and it prolongs the half-life. An androgen receptor, excuse me, has a half-life of four hours. Estrogen extends this, and it also produces more. So if you increase your estrogen levels or you manage your estrogen levels more efficiently, then you are going to create more androgen receptors. More androgen receptors in muscle tissue means more hormone can be uptaken, more hormone can be uptaken, more signaling creation, more signaling creation, more protein synthesis, more muscle tissue growth. So you see where it goes. Now, um, excuse me a minute. Oh. When it comes to managing estrogen, I would say that you need to be as high as you can be in relation to managing sides. So it all depends on how sensitive you are. I, for one, estrogen causes me water retention, it causes me fat, fat depositation, but it doesn't give me gyno. So the other two I'm not that bothered about, and that's one of the reasons I've managed to grow to the extent I have in the past, is because I never overly suppress my estrogen. It's also why I'm a very big fan of Novadex because it allows estrogen to remain in your liver and have an effect on that pentose phosphate pathway. Um, and why you see a lot of guys, like I say, that don't have physiques that reflect the drug usage. Now, E2 also supports serotonin activity. A happy mood drug, the one that ease ecstasy plays with. Uh, Oversuppression can cause what's uh, what the clinical chronic fatigue. This can be caused by low estrogen. Ironically, it can be caused by super high estrogen as well. So, you know, if you really want to do this right, you're going to need to test. You're going to need to manage your estrogen levels, and you need to be aware of how you feel at various levels. And then you need to make a decision as to what is your upper end ratio for a balance of having elevated estrogen and feeling okay with it. And the last thing, and probably one of the more important things, is it supports lipid production in the liver, particularly HDL. 
obviously we all know how important that is with the effects that uh, steroids have on LDL production and the fact that many will actually try and reduce HDL and the impact of plaque levels and uh, cardiovascular disease based on that. So as you can see, quite an important little hormone and it's quite strange actually because um, I had a conversation with somebody after the thing, and I'm not going to name any names, they will know who they are, uh, hopefully nobody else will. Now this is a female. Uh, she had a vasectomy 16 years ago and has no hormone production whatsoever. She's incredibly lean, even though she eats 4,000 calories a day. And she had previously run 60 milligrams of D-ball a day. Now, for most people, if you said that about a female, you'd be like, what the hell are you doing? That's way too much. She put a stone of muscle on and a very little virilization. And it may not, it may surprise you to know that females actually produce estrogen from testosterone. They produce testosterone and they have testosterone in their systems, but they have a higher conversion rate of testosterone to estrogen. So more of what they produce in testosterone is converted to estrogen. Now, the strange thing is that hormone use doesn't seem to affect their testosterone production in the same way it does males. But because this person had no testosterone production, they had no estrogen production. Because they had no estrogen production, they struggled for growth. When they put Anavar in, they still had no estrogen production and got little in the way of growth. But when they ran an aromatizing drug like the Anabol, suddenly that was aromatizing to estrogen that gave them estrogen and they had stupendous growth. So, it just goes to show how important estrogen is in growth. And this is why estrogen is recommended with trend, not to the point of view that trend needs estrogen to, to, to work, but from the point of view that your body needs estrogen to grow. So if you're running any non-aromatizing drug and you don't have an aromatizing drug in your system, then you run the risk of restricting growth and you will not get the same sort of gains out of that cycle if you have an aromatizing drug in there. Okay, now regards management. We have CIRMs, we have AIs, and then we have things like aromacin, which is a suicide inhibitor. Now, Clomid is a CIRM, but the most common one that people use as CIRM is Novodex, or also known as tamoxifen, selective estrogen receptor modulator. It blocks certain estrogen receptors, but it also has a positive impact on other estrogen receptors, one of these being the liver, where lipids are managed. So, I personally think it's a very good choice of drug. It allows estrogen elevation within the body, but restricts the negative impacts of estrogen elevation within the body. Next up the list, I would go look at aromacin. Now, this is a suicide inhibitor. This binds with aromatase, which is the enzyme that converts testosterone to estrogen, making it inactive. And then you've got your anti, um, sorry, your AIs, sorry, brain fog, uh, where we're looking at ADEX, arimidex, and letrozole. Now, both of these stop the or restrict the production of aromatase. So they control estrogen by not allowing it to be formed in the very first instance. The problem with this is, <clears throat> that when they're removed, you get rebound. So you can get a period of high estrogen post usage, which can be problematic in PCT. And the other issue here is that letrozole is about 96 efficient, 96 percent efficient. So it's something you really don't want to be using unless it's just before comp, or you've got serious gyno issues. And I'd be more even then. I'd still look at Novadex because it blocks the receptors in breast tissue. ADEX, not as harsh in the 60% red percentiles, 60, 65, 66, somewhere around there, but you're still going to get the rebound issue. Really, whatever you're doing for the first few times with your estrogen management, you need to do blood testing and see where everything's sitting. Now, this will only apply if you are using either aromacin, letro, or ADEX. It doesn't apply if you're using Novadex to work for because you'll still have elevated estrogens and you won't know at what amount is actually being blocked at the receptor. But if you're running an AI or you're running an aromacin, 
then I recommend testing so you know exactly where your estrogen levels are. And I think you'll be pleasantly surprised if you light them right a bit higher than you would normally in your results that you will get. Obviously pre-comp, we're looking at a different scenario. There we want to keep each of them very, very tight because we don't want water retention and we want to increase fat burning potential of the drugs that we're using and we want to reduce the fat storage potential that estrogen has. Um, but then we're not really focused on growth going into a competition, we're focused on muscle maintenance and the loss of fat. So there you go, that's estrogen for you. Um, hope you find that useful and I'm going to get off now and I'll catch up with you soon.